Human error. Nevada. Inside the Park Theater. This Saturday, International Fight Week culminates with a colossal pay-per-view event. First off, a rematch 17 years in the making. It's a five-round welterweight showdown between two of the fight game's most iconic names. Introducing the former UFC welterweight champion, a man who's put on some of the most memorable fights in MMA history. 28 career wins with 20 by knockouts. Welcome, ruthless Robbie Lawler. Lawler faces a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. One of the most revered fighters in all of combat sports. A former WEC and Strike Force champion. Returning for the first time in over six years. Welcome back, the Octagon legend, Stockton's own, Nick Diaz! Moving on to the co-headliner for the undisputed UFC Flyweight Championship. Here is the challenger, a former Invicta champion, looking to shake up the MMA world by beating the bullet. Winner of five straight fights, this is Lucky Lauren Murphy. And her opponent, Dominant at every level, she's owned the UFC flyweight division since its inception. Winner of seven straight fights. Looking to defend her title for a record sixth straight time. One of the best pound for pound fighters in the world today. This is Valentina Shevchenko. Moving on to the main event. It's a battle between elite featherweights. The challenge for the throne hails from California and brings with him a lethal finishing ability that has put him on the doorstep of UFC gold. Riding the momentum of his dominant victory over the Korean Zombie, introducing Brian T-City Ortega! And finally, one of the best fighters in the world today, an Australian champion who has run the featherweight division for nearly two years, holding wins over Chad Mendes, Jose Aldo, and Max Holloway twice. Here is the reigning, defending, 145-pound UFC champion, Alexander the Great Volkanovski! What's up, Vegas? How are you? Thanks for coming out today. We appreciate it. John Morgan, where are you at? Over here, guys. Uh, no disrespect to the champions, but Nick, I know a lot of people are here to see you and very excited to, uh, that you're back. So I want to start with you. Look, Nick, I know you have kind of a love-hate relationship with Fight Week, but I do wonder how you feel right now, you know, with the crowd in front of you, all the support that you're getting right now. Does this feel uh, at least a moment that you can enjoy? Yeah, no, I feel good. I feel, I feel real good. Thanks, Nick. And, you know, we found out earlier this week it's going to be a middleweight fight instead of a welterweight fight. So I'm just curious, tactically, you know, strategically, does that favor one person or the other? Do you think that changes this fight at all, the change in the weight class? No, no I think it just makes it a little smoother. You know, smoother ride. Yep. Fair enough. And last thing, Nick, that I wanted to ask for you. As you sit here, I mean, is this something that you see, like, I want to keep doing this? As you, I mean, I know you probably want to see how things go on Saturday and how you feel afterwards, but is this something you say, I can't wait for this to be over and never do it again? Or are you saying, no, I'm happy I'm back and, you know, seeing this for the crowd, I want to do this more often? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, def definitely want to do this more often. I mean, especially if I get my ass whooped. <laughs> if I get my ass whooped, I'm going to come back right, right away. I get my ass when I come right back. Thank you, Nick. Alex, I want to ask you, we, we talked to Brian yesterday, and he said, listen, if you guys weren't rivals, if you weren't fighting, he thinks you could be good acquaintances. So I'm curious, after this is over, do you think you can sit down and have a pint and be a good acquaintance, or is, uh, is this going to go beyond this fight? To be honest, I would have to be pretty drunk to get along with him, I think. Um, 
You know, I mean, I'll be honest again, you know, obviously I'm known to be respectful, but, uh, you know, there's just things that, that annoy me and, and that's that. So, uh, yeah, everything, uh, every, every word that comes out of, his, out of his mouth annoys me now. So, yeah, probably not. And Alex, to follow up, I know you're kind of looking still for respect as champ, right? I think people kind of doubt you sometimes. So do you think winning this fight by any means, whether it be, you know, five rounds, you'll, you'll get that? Or do you feel like you got to go out there and, and finish this guy to maybe earn that respect as champion that you may be lacking right now? Mate, I want to get, get that finish. You know, we say that every time, but I'm doing what I can to get that finish. You know what I mean? Right now, winning's not enough. And then obviously doing the whole uh, ultimate fighter with, with Ortega and having it, making it, uh, you know, a bit more personal. Uh, you know, obviously going out there and getting the finish would mean so much more. So that's definitely what I'm looking for. I'm going to be pushing, put that pace, crumble him, and get the finish. Thank you, Alex. And Brian, I did want to ask you as well. I mean, obviously this fight was supposed to take place earlier this year. You got to spend a lot of time around him, scouting him, getting to get feel him out. I'm curious, did you learn anything from that time? Any weaknesses that you might be able to exploit or anything that you changed from then until now? No, man, nothing's changed, you know, from the beginning, from the beginning camp to the second camp, uh, nothing's changed. All I got was, I got to see him a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that's about it. Thanks, Brian. And Dana, just two quick ones for you, if I could, please. Uh, we know that uh, Nazrat and Hooker are on their way here, I guess, right now. Do you have any updates on kind of their status? And, and um, also, if, if, if there'll be any kind of weight concessions or anything, there, there seems like it's going to be tough for them to make weight. Yeah, you know. Making fights and, and, and getting fights to happen uh, when they're supposed to is tough enough. And then you look at the last couple of years, we, we've had visas, borders closing down, COVID and, and, and all, the, uh, all that type of stuff to deal with. You know, it makes it obviously tougher. But these guys are both absolute studs. I mean, if anybody knows the backstory, you know, one of their moms just died. He flew home for the funeral then turned around and came right back, had visa issues that we had to, we had to fix. And, and uh, same thing with Hooker. These guys are going to land today. They both want to fight on Saturday, and neither has asked for a weight. Uh, you know, they're both going to make weight, according to them. So, I mean, th those are the type of people that are in this sport, and it's why people love this sport so much. And, uh, you know, incredible, unique individuals is all I can say. That's awesome. So... Yeah. And Dana, just one last one. We spoke to Alex and Brian yesterday, and they both said, hey, listen, you know, regardless of who wins, they both kind of look at Max Holloway as still being a number one contender right now. So I'm curious if you could give us an update on Max, what, you know, kind of where he's standing. Do you view him as a number one contender for whoever comes out of this fight? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at, you got the champ, and then the top four guys in that division are all bad dudes from, you know, uh, Max, obviously, the, the, the zombie, Yair Rodriguez. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of tough guys there. So timing and all the other bullshit that I just mentioned two minutes ago will play a factor in who fights next. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Question, question for Robbie. Go ahead, Shmo. All right, question for Nick Diaz. In the time you've been out of the octagon, your younger brother, Nate Diaz, he's turned into one of the biggest stars inside the UFC. As an older brother, how does that make you feel? Uh, I'm proud, I'm proud. I kind of, I tried to pave the way, set it up that way. I, I didn't expect to drag so hard. Coming back, it's been, you know, it's been kind of a, a mission. But, I, you know, I've done all the work my whole life, so, I'm, you know, I've got... Some fights left, and you know, it, I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape, so you look good. Question for the champ Volkanovski: You started the Ultimate Fighter 0 and 4. After that, the tides changed. What kind of behavioral changes did you notice in Ortega to give you the confidence for Saturday evening? My, yeah, that, that's yeah. I've seen a lot of changes. He was, uh, you know, when he's with uh, with his boys or when his uh, confidence is up. You know, he's up perking his chest and, and all that type of stuff. As soon as things uh, went uh, downhill for him, he was quiet. He didn't have much to say. So that's, uh, that's why I told him. I told him, keep that same energy. If things turn around, keep that same energy. He didn't. So that, that's, that's it. But I, I see a lot of holes. I see uh, just from every time I spend time with him, I see weakness. I see weakness every time. Every time I, I even talk to the bloke. Final question for Lucky Lauren Murphy. You're going up against the champion, Valentina Shevchenko. She's never lost in this weight division. You're here for a reason. You're used to the underdog role. 
you're plus 1,700. Why is Saturday night going to be different for you? Different than what? I've been winning all the way up to this point. It's not going to be any different than what I've been doing to get here. Why is it going to be different for the champ, Valentina? I messed up. She hasn't faced anybody like me. I'm tough, I'm mean as fuck, I'm not afraid of her, and I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. Go ahead, Kevin. Somebody else, whoever, whoever's up next, go. Okay, my question is for Nick. Oh, is he going or not? Nick, uh, Nick Diaz, my question for you. Uh, just one question is, uh, since you last fought, your brother has become a star in the UFC, headlined a show at Madison Square Garden, uh, has, has had many memorable fights. You've always been the, uh, the general of the Nick Diaz army. Do you think he's kind of taken that position over now and he's the, the head of the family and kind of the head of the fighting group? Yeah, yeah, sure he has. I'm, I'm, working, I'm working on, you know, I'm working on um, leveling up with him a little bit, you know, as far as... You know, as far as, you know, I, I, I got I to gotta fight and regardless, you know, win or lose, I got to fight and then, um, you know, I can, I can, you know, help the kids and, and get everybody training, you know, help train these guys. Questions for Ravi back here. All the way in the back, right here. Right here. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Uh, I know a lot of questions have been, like, will this fight happen or not, especially after yesterday, but now that you actually see Nick right there on the stage with you, has your attitude changed at all towards him and this fight? Are you just still thinking about the fight? Uh, it's just business as usual, uh, just focusing on the task at hand. Uh, Nick's a hell of an opponent, so I had to make sure my training camp went really well, and that's what I focus on, what I need, what I need to do, and everything I can handle, I've, I've done it, so I'm ready to go. And one for Nick. You also, you have two teammates on this card, Nick, up oh, back here. Uh, you have two teammates on this card that a lot of fight fans might not know. So for uh, fans who don't know anything about Martin or Maximoff, what can they expect when they fight? Uh, yeah, I mean, Maximoff, he's a strong kid. He's, you know, he's got a lot of potential. I, I see him going far in the sport. Um, yeah, I don't, it, 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 with his skill set, I don't think anybody's, going to match that, you know. Um, he's a strong kid. Then one last one for Valentina uh, back here. You've obviously faced the best of the best at flyweight. Is there one thing that Lauren Murphy does? Valentina Rea. Right. Uh, you've obviously faced the best of the best at flyweight, but is there one thing that you see from Lauren's game that she does better than your previous opponents? You know, I always say, like, uh, there is no similar fight games. There is no similar uh, people that fight in the same style. All is unique. Everyone is unique. They have all different fight style. Lauren has her fight style. But it doesn't mean I don't have approach to her style. I have approach to her. I know what I have to do, and I just will do it to take my belt home. And that's it. Hey, Nick, right down here on your left, over here in front. It's all good, bro. Nick, when people say this is the people's main event, Diaz versus Lawler 2, what does that mean to you? That, that's, that's, that's great. I'm glad they feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> Valentina, for you, people keep talking about what keeps her motivated, what keeps her performing at such a high level for so long. What's your answer? I was answering is like all week long, what is my motivation? Martial arts is my motivation. Be part of UFC, it's my motivation. Compete in the high level of like, uh, th through all fighters, course, like the highest level in the world, this is my motivation. What can be else? <laughs> then for Dana, you got, the, you got the Hall of Fame, you've got fan signings all week. Would you say, finally, 100% for the UFC, it's wide back open after pushing for so long? Yeah, I mean, we're wide open in certain states, you know. There's other countries that we still can't go to, but, you know, at least now people can move around, you know, the United States, and, 
New York's a big one. The fact that we're getting into New York and if we can get in there and, and pull this thing off um, w without any, anything going wrong over there, we're on our way. I I'd say we're on our way, yeah. If you were a fan and you're one of the people like the rest of us, which fan event would you be at this week? If I was a fan, where would I be? Which one of the, the events? Fight. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, Ben. Ben Baudouin from RDS in Montreal. Quick question for Nick. Your uh, ESPN interview yesterday was pretty interesting and worrisome in some way. Do you stand by everything you said? Are you still maybe scared to go in the octagon? Not really motivated by this fight? Oh no, I, I never. I didn't. I don't know if you took it through. I don't know if I don't feel like I, I meant to say it like the way you said it. That was no. It was different. <laughs> okay. it was, um, is is your re, is your no, head in the I, right place? I, I just. I, mean? I I didn't. You know, there was a few things the way this fight got set up. You know, or lined up and and um, I mean, either way, it doesn't make a difference. When I get when I get some someone in front of me, I I I, I seem to be right back. Um, You know, I did, I've, I've always trained with, you know, with the best and I've always held my own with the best. So, um, it, it's just, I, you know, I, I didn't expect at this age to catch so much, uh, so much heat and so much expectation from everybody. It's kind of hard to, before I was used to just, you know, saying hi and being happy with everybody. And then now all of a sudden I'm going like, whoa, hey, wait, 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 you know, um, oh, Oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's that's all. You know, I wasn't I wasn't ready for all of the um, the extra the extra attention or attention and attention. At least you got a lot of support, uh, Robbie. Can you react on that? What, what was your reaction when you hear when you heard this interview yesterday? Did you see it? Same reaction I always have. Like business as usual, I gotta focus on what I need to focus on, which is a fight. I can't be watching everyone else's stuff, trying to figure out what they're saying and what's going on in their head. I need to focus on what I gotta do, which is get ready for this fight, make sure I'm in tip-top shape, and that's it. And the last one for Dana, uh, about the uh, Hall of Fame induction tonight, George Champier is gonna be inducted. What? What did he mean for this company and for the sport of MMA overall? Yeah, you know, obviously the timing was everything. We, we, we were heading into Canada and, and, and getting sanctioned in all the different provinces there. And, and he became a huge star for us, broke tons of records. And that whole time period of George St. Pierre and opening Canada was, was a very massive part of the history of the sport and a very fun time for me, my staff, and obviously the fans. So... Um, and he's one of the greatest human beings on the planet, so very happy for him and, and, and proud to induct him into the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Go ahead, brother. Question, question for Alex. Alex, you spent the Ultimate Fighter Series next to Brian. I'm curious, what is the biggest thing you learned about him during that experience? To, to be honest, uh, well, obviously I'm professional, and you know, I've said it all week, I'm professional and And weakness, you know what I mean? That's a, and the re, what upsets me the most is I'm professional. I put, I put the hard yards in my whole life, especially in this career. That's how I got this belt. And, uh, you know, he half ass it, turns up training late. You know what I mean? You name it. I just see weakness. You know, I'm mean? professional. Obviously, showing weakness, obviously, uh, you know, a few years back, you know, popping, producing, you know what I mean? Shit like that. That shit annoys me. It's not professional and I ain't about that shit. And uh, I'm curious for you, Brian, what is the biggest thing you learned about Alex during the Ultimate Fighter? Not much. <laughs> do you agree that you're unprofessional, or do you think he's way off? I don't know. I think uh, I, I uh, see life through a different lens, you know? Some people like to be told what to do. I kind of live them all in time. As long as I get the job like done, right? That's, told that's what to matters do. to me. Mate, ever since I got told you popped, I had no idea. Ever since I got told, that's it. I'm done. That shit done stay with me. I'm you've over that done. shit. You've been done, right? Don't do shit about it, though. T-City over here. 
Does it bother you that this man feels that you shouldn't even be in the octagon with you, that he thinks that you're not on his level? How much does that fire you up to get the job done on Saturday night? I'm already here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to share the octagon with him whether he likes it or not, whether he likes me or not. We're going to fucking fight. Hey, hey he deserves to be here. He deserves to be here. I'll give him that. You know? But he ain't taking the belt. You don't we'll deserve it. That. We'll see about that. Have you thought about, have you envisioned about getting your name called and hearing and new and being that guy from the hood to represent on this big level? How, how much of a dream with the reality would that become? I envision it all the time, man. I envision it all the time. Someone that came up like I did and uh, had to go through the shit that I had to go through to get here and to keep working. Um, I got my unprofessional ass over here, you know? <laughs> Next question for Valentina. If you get another dominant win on Saturday night, are you the most dominant champion in UFC across the board, in your opinion? In my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's not depends on Saturday only, in my opinion, right? But I tell you that I'm, um, all my fights, I'm getting ready very strong for this fight. And I know it's going to be a very good fight. I hope Lauren going to bring everything that she has because I don't want anything like more nothing more it's I gonna do for my job I gonna go in there like put best performance what I can do try to find my finish as soon as I can and take my belt back that's it <laughs> five questions for Nick what since we hadn't seen you in the octagon or nothing have nothing to go about what do you have to go on that you can be Kamaru and get the belt at 170 I think I'm a, a better fighter all around. If I can, if I can survive this fight, I got a I got a hard fight, you know, with uh, with this guy. So if I can survive this fight, um, yeah, I don't see, I don't, I don't see any reason why, I, you know. I won't, so, I won't. so you gonna call him out if you win? You gonna call out Kamaru Usman on Saturday night? I, I think it's already. I think that that fight's already. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. And, and if I don't win, I'd like to see Robbie get the fight, you know. Uh. And final question is for Lauren. How's it feel of being in this position with such being such an underdog and you find somebody where you need your personal best just to compete with them because they're at such a high level? I believe my best is good enough to beat anybody in the world. And uh, I love the position that I'm in. I get to climb the mountain. I'm going to walk through the fire. I get to shock the world. I have everything to gain in this fight. And uh, I kind of feel bad for Valentina because it's like, if she looks even like less than superhuman for even a second in the fight, people are going to say, oh my God, Lauren Murphy of all people made you look human. That's a lot of pressure on the champ, you know? So <coughs> I'm happy to be where I'm at. Question for Nick Diaz. Nick over here. This way. Nick, these people love you. Nick, the world loves you. You're an absolute legend. But earlier this week, you told ESPN, quote, I have a lot of resentment toward the sport for taking so much from me and not giving anything back. It's a fair question. What did the sport rob you of and what does it still owe you? You know, you know what, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking like the UFC, just maybe like the whole sport in general. Like, yeah, it, it, it's just, uh, I, I always fought, like, you know, I had three to five fights a year for, like, seven, 17 years or so. All I, all I ever thought about was weight, you know, what am I going to eat? After a while, you realize there's more to life, and then, um, yeah, and then everybody, uh, yeah, okay, buddy. And, um, yeah, you know, after a while, you realize there's more to life, and then and then everybody kind of like, you know, uh, dig digs their heels into you when you're down. It's kind of it's kind of rough, you know. Like, um, I you know, it's nice to see a lot of support, like two weeks leading up to a fight. Um, you know, but what about the last five years? You know, is kind of how I feel. Of course, I get a lot of highs and buys, and. and you know, I, I've, I've done plenty of handshakes. I don't, you know, I'd like to take some of those back. But, uh. All right. Thank you, sir. Question for Valentino. Valentina, how long would it take 
for you and your sister to send Jake and Logan Paul to that place where time does not exist. How long would it take you guys to finish them? Zero seconds. It's not a question. Zero seconds? Yeah, not even one second. Spasiba. All right, I'm going to uh, get this stuff out of here, square these guys off. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. See you Saturday night.